Hi, I'm Dr. Lucian Willett, uh, coming to you from Ortho Virginia, our Farmville office. Uh, we opened Farmville back in September, and uh, it's been a great community to be into. So we appreciate all you guys joining us today. Uh, I'm uh, originally from Maine and trained medically in pediatrics, and then I did extra training in primary care sports medicine. So I take care of all the non-operative issues uh, for our patients in Farmville, referring them off to our surgeons in Lynch, uh, Lynchburg, you know, as needed. Um, with my pediatric training, I wanted to talk to you guys today about uh, joint pain in kids. Uh, and it really is the, uh, something that shouldn't happen. Uh, young athletes certainly can have muscle pains from, from their training and certainly from uh, minor injuries. But when kids have joint pain, we really get concerned. Um, on this list that you'll see here, the, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that can go wrong. So this list just covers knee pain. So when I'm seeing a young athlete, these are some of the things that are in our head, um, trying to think through based on the history and the physical as to which of these may be more likely. Some of them can be related to acute injuries, some of them more chronic injuries, uh, depending on how long they've been around, as well as uh, ways that the children move, what sports they're doing and, and what load they're kind of putting to their, their body. Uh, go ahead. The kids are not small adults. So one of the biggest differences with kids is that they have growth plates and growth plates are all over their body. Um, part of my job is to help them protect their growth plates so they can have normal growth throughout their body. Uh, growth plates will be present uh, all the way up through college age, um, up by your collarbone. It can take that long for those growth plates to close. The growth plate is uh, part of the muscle tendon unit that helps the joints to move. And it's the weakest part of that unit. And so it's often the part that gets injured first. So the pictures, you can see that there's a variety of growth plates around the hip. Some of them up by where you wear your pants, some of them along the side of your hip with that bone that you can touch. And then the bone that we sit on has another growth plate down through the bottom. Your knee has a couple of growth plates above and below the joint. Uh, your ankle, a couple of bones in there, again, with growth plates in each of them. And then with your foot, there's a normal growth plate through your heel, uh, as well as down through your toes. Uh, any of these growth plates can be injured. Uh, and you have similar growth plates up in your arms, but today we're just focusing on the legs with this discussion. So some of the injuries that can happen, you see the normal on the right and on the left side there, you see that part of the growth plate has been pulled right off the bone. Uh, obviously that's going to affect the growth of this growth plate if we don't get it back into the right position. Similarly at the knee, you can see the, the front part uh, of that growth plate has been pulled away and something that we're going to want to put back into the right position uh, to maintain the structure and growth and function of their knee. With their hip, that sometimes can be a little more difficult to see. Uh, where the red arrow is on the left, you see that piece of bone pulled off. There's a muscle that attaches there uh, that controls part of your hip and knee motion. And so with one stride, they can pull that bone off even without uh, a more severe injury seeming to occur. And lastly, some of these are difficult to see when you get plain x-rays. There's actually a faint line within the growth plate of the tibia on this one. And if we're not certain and we need more detail, we sometimes get a CT scan where you can see a lot better detail of the growth plate and how it's aligned and decide whether that's acceptable or something that we need to help realign. So when kids get growth plate issues, a lot of times it's related to uh, the way that they move. Um, so as, as a sports medicine physician, I'm often thinking about how can we improve the, the um, function of the joint so that we minimize the risk of arthritis down the road and we uh, maintain uh, normal growth through the bone and through the joint. We have to determine if it's safe for the athletes to get back to play. And sometimes we can do that with protection uh, and sometimes we do it without protection. Um, a lot of it involves correcting those underlying mechanics that may have gotten the kids into trouble in the first place. So the schematics on the right uh, show you some correct spine position with the green lines outlining the position of the spine and different movements. 
while the red side there uh, shows you more of the, the curves uh, that we all tend to develop within our back at different times through the day. Uh, so we wanna be more on the green side as much as we can. Down below that, you see a woman performing a very good squat uh, where her, the lines through her joints are lining up appropriately. She's putting weight through her heels the way we want. In comparison to the woman to the right of her, where her feet are collapsing in and that collapse starts a twisting motion through her feet, knees, hips, and even her back. And so it's those kind of corrections we wanna make so that everybody is squatting the way the woman is on the left. Uh, the, one of the screening tools that I use is called a long sit position where people sit up straight through their lower back and their pelvis. We have them straighten their knee out as much as they can. For those who can't straighten their knee, that's already a sign that they're really tight through the hips around their uh, uh, hips and their knees. With their knees straight, we want them to be able to pull their ankle back toward their shin so they can get to at least a 90 degree angle, preferably a little bit more, which is what you need when you're walking. So I use this frequently to show people uh, some of the restrictions within their body that can contribute to some of the movements uh, like the woman in the lower panel on the right with the uh, improper squat. People ask about orthotics all the time just to correct the foot position. And you can use those to try to assist the foot position. But what we're really trying to do is to get the muscles in your feet uh, to do their job and correct the position of your foot and your ankle on their own. Uh, those muscles are called your foot core. And you can see uh, with the right foot, of the picture on the left that her arch is kind of flattened, her Achilles tendon kind of bends out to the outside. Uh, and so that's similar to the pronation position that we're trying to correct. We wanna get people more into the neutral position where the Achilles lines up straight when they're standing still. So when they move, their foot is gonna bend and twist like it's supposed to, but when you're stationary, we really want that neutral position. Try to avoid getting into the supinated position, which is just going to put extra force on the outside part of your foot, which is not good either. So really working toward that neutral position through their foot. Some of the exercises they may have you do, you see the arch pretty flat in the first picture. And by activating the muscles in their feet in the direction of the white arrow, you, they can pull the arch up a little bit within their foot. They can practice by lifting their toes and trying to lower just the piggy toes and then lower the big toe and really gain control of all the muscles in your feet. Your feet have the same muscles that your hands have. And so you really should be able to do similar motions with your feet that you can do with your hands. Most of us can't do that. Some of the physical therapy exercises will start with just trying to get the motion back into your uh, muscles and your ankle. Uh, either pushing against a wall, notice that her, her left arch is maintained as she's doing it. They may have you using a foam roller or some other massage device to kind of work through the tightness within your calf. All to try to make it easier when you stand up, building toward that correct squat technique uh, like you see with this gentleman. As you master the squat, they'll progress you to doing things on one leg while you maintain that arch building again toward moving on that one leg uh, into positions like this, and ultimately into hopping and jumping activities, which ties more into sports with running, jumping, and changing direction. And all of this has to be done with that foot in the right position when it's in that, that stationary phase. Otherwise, the twist happens through your leg and just really increases the risk of your pain. So for me, it's a lot of these uh, lower body things that I look at. And again, there are, there are upper body similarities uh, that we look for, particularly around the shoulder blade and the neck and how well people control the muscles uh, in those areas. Uh, the analogy I use is building a house. If you're gonna build a house, you're gonna want a really stable foundation. And then from the foundation, you're gonna uh, build the house above it. So the foot core and your foot mechanics are the foundation of your legs. And then your shoulder blade mechanics are the foundation of your arm. If the foundation is not adequate, particularly with kids, uh, they're likely to develop pain through their growth plates and pain inside of their joints. 
Uh, so if kids are uh, active, or even if they're not that active, if they're having pain in their joints, you really should see somebody to figure out why the joint is swollen or why it's painful in the first place. That's all I have for the presentation. So I hope you guys have some questions and we can do a little back and forth here. There are questions. Thank you so much. So to start with, what are growth plates made from? Are they bone? So the growth plate is technically part of your bone, but it's actually cartilage. It's multiple layers of cells that as they divide, they make the bone grow longer and bigger. And when you're done growing, they progressively uh, calcify or turn into regular bone. Uh, and so as adults, you can't tell really where your growth plate is or where it was. If a child injures their growth plate, will it affect their bone later? So it can affect their bone. Uh, and that's one of the major concerns that I have. I showed you some extreme pictures of what are called avulsion fractures, where the growth plate gets pulled apart uh, quite significantly. Most of what we see for growth plate injuries, the growth plate looks normal on the x-rays. It just is the area where they hurt. And so for those for the breaks where the growth plate stays appropriately aligned, it should grow normal. Uh, without an issue. It's the more major injuries, like when it gets pulled away from the rest of the growth plate, then you can have an effect on the growth where the bone can grow too fast or it can grow too slow. So what we'll often do is follow people every three months or every six months um, with x-rays and make sure that the bones are growing equal to the other side. You gave some suggestions of exercises. Are those exercises just for children are they also good for adults with these issues? So I'm focusing on kids with this talk, but it really is everybody. Um, kids, the beauty of kids is they tend to be a little bit more pliable, so they can kind of correct things a little more easily than uh, those of us as we get middle age and older. Um, there, there is kind of a point of no return as you age where it becomes very difficult to change the position of uh, your foot. But for I've had people in their 50s and 60s be able to change the position of their foot through these exercises and make their their legs feel significantly better. Uh, so if you can catch it early and the kids can maintain appropriate use of their foot core, it's less likely to affect their joints for more long term. But for those of us more middle aged and older, we certainly could still benefit from the exercises. Why is the arch of the foot so important? So the arch of the foot provides some uh, shock absorption and energy transfer to, to push all the energy from your foot up through your leg. So if your foot pronates, you waste a lot of that energy off the inside part of your ankle and it makes jumping, running, walking just less efficient, which means everything else has to work harder uh, up above. You gave an example in some of the images of an ankle that had a growth plate out of place. So how would you tell if muscle pain is okay for children doing sports, but joint pain isn't? If somebody, for example, twisted their ankle, how do you tell the difference between um, like a simple little strain or sprain and something like that growth plate issue? So we can tell with our exam and with x-rays um, or CT scan and other images if we have to. Uh, as a parent, what I would say is if your child uh, seems to have a pretty minor injury, but it's not really getting better over a couple of days, they really should be looked at and make sure that they haven't injured the growth plate. If they've had an injury where the joint itself is swollen or hurts a lot when they try to move the joint, then they should be seen sooner. How does specialization in sports affect this issue? So specialization definitely has an effect. Um, ideally, uh, kids will follow the American Academy of Pediatric Guidelines for sports participation, which is no organized sports two days a week, no organized sports two months a year, and that can be broken up into weeks. It doesn't have to be two months at a time. Ideally, they're gonna be on one team at a time they're going to do one sport at a time and they're going to rotate sports through the year. We all know kids nowadays who do a sport all year long and add other sports on top of it. Uh, I think my most active child had seven sports teams that they were on at one time and they came to see me because their body hurt. Um, so 
kids are not little adults where they can just train, train, train. And in fact, the adult athletes, professional athletes and semi-pro athletes that we take care of, they don't train all year. They actually take a break and let their body recover. So with the, with the way that it's so easy to specialize in a sport at a young age, uh, I think we're doing our young athletes a disservice, uh, both in their skill development, but also in their risk of injury. Uh, to me, kids should do a variety of sports, uh, taking breaks from running sports and doing things like swimming so they can recover from the impact, uh, really up until probably junior or senior year of high school. And then if they want to start to specialize as they're building in toward college, uh, they could really start to do it at that point. But there are kids now that are five, six years old that are doing year round baseball, lacrosse, you know, pretty much any sport that you want to look for. Do you have some suggestions for exercises for Severs disease? So Severs disease is that growth plate on the heel that gets inflamed and aggravated. And a lot of that has to do with exactly what we're talking about. The kids' calves are often too tight. They may not have the strength within their hips to support their legs the right way. And it causes them to pronate and twist that growth plate. So the, the program that we just talked about uh, through physical therapy is really what that child needs to get their uh, muscles loosened up, make sure the mechanics are correct through their foot and through their hip. My guideline for children uh, with Severs or other growth plate issues is often limping. So if the child can do their sport with a little bit of discomfort, but nobody can see them favoring the joint or limping, then that may be okay. But if the child is limping during the sport or continuing to limp after the sport, then that's too much for the growth plate and they really should shut it down and get into a, a therapy program to fix the problem. We have a comment that says that this person has teenage gymnasts who are always in pain. What are some things we should be looking at doing for them with respect to preventing worse pain down the road? They do 20 hours a week and are a 14 year old boy and 16 year old girl. So we see lots of gymnasts and uh, the first thing I look at with the gymnasts are those base points. Do they have the appropriate shoulder strength? to be able to support their arms while they're doing a lot of arm loading. I see a lot of gymnasts who don't have appropriate shoulder strength and they rely on their wrist and they end up affecting the growth plates within their wrist. So unfortunately, what I often do is shut the kids down from their gymnastics temporarily, work on correcting the mechanics and gradually build them back up, um, you know, as their strength is, uh, is improving. And similarly through their legs, you know, they have to be landing the right way uh, in that squat position, uh, I would say with gymnast, I see less about the legs and more about the, uh, the arms and wrists, uh, as far as uh, the load that they're putting across them. Uh, so it really does take a, a coach who's going to be diligent with their technique. Uh, and unfortunately sometimes takes patience on the, the whole family's part, particularly the athlete to take a break and fix the problem. People use tiger paws, some people tape, you know, they try to support the joint as best they can. Uh, but if, if you've tried all the simple things and the joint still hurts, you gotta, you gotta figure out where that's coming from. What are some common causes of knee pain in young women who are rowers? And are there good exercises to try to help that pain? So rowing is a squat. If you think about the motion you're doing with your legs, it's a squat. And so it's the same squat mechanic that we showed in the picture. When they get into that deep row position, they really should have a lot of weight pushing through their heels, not through the balls of their feet. And a lot of people don't have the ability to keep their heels engaged on the ground or on the, the foot pedals when they're in that deep squat because they're too tight in their calves. And so part of it comes to technique. And if they can't do the technique correctly, then they need to figure out why and work through the tightness and then build back just like we talked about with the uh, the other progression. Um, you can sometimes modify it a bit by not going as deep into that squat motion temporarily uh, while you're working on loosening up the calf. Uh, but it really takes a good physical therapist to, to be able to put the whole chain together because the tightness may actually be in your hip 
that doesn't let you bend enough to get down into the right position. So you got to find where the restriction is as to why you can't keep your knees lined up with your feet and keep your heels engaged on the, uh, the foot pedals, um, regardless of what the sport is. You know, cycling is a similar thing where people will put their feet uh, onto the pedals. The pedals are under the balls of your feet. And so they'll really push with the balls of their feet. And that just creates a lot of pressure on their kneecap. What you really want to do is drop your heel down and act as if you're pushing through your heel. So if your foot's on something, your heel should stay on it. And if it's all on your forefoot, uh, then you have to drop your heel down and act as if you're pushing through your heel. A ladder is the same thing. When you climb a ladder, your foot goes on the, the step, you should drop that heel down and act like you're pushing through your heel. All right, thank you so much. That is all of the questions we have for right now. If you want to go ahead and leave a, a question in the comments, we will answer it later. Would you like to close? I appreciate you all joining today. Um, it, it's a, a topic I think uh, everybody can benefit from. You know, again, I'll be focused on uh, youth athletes today, but the way that we move really matters. Um, and we can really make a big difference, whether it's older folks with knee arthritis or whether it's younger athletes that are just getting involved with sports. Uh, correcting the way that you move and control your, your legs can really make a difference uh, in your performance as well as in the amount of pain that you have with those activities.